Our generous God calls out generous disciples. A famous prayer attributed to Ignatius of Loyola, founder of the Jesuits, begins like this. Lord, teach me to be generous, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost. How does that land with us at present, with all the many demands upon us? A few years ago, I was invited to visit a poor Christian family in a Palestinian refugee camp. Before getting there, I was told by a friend that whatever I did, I must not turn down their hospitality. The food and hospitality I received was overwhelming and it was clear to me how much that Christian generosity must have cost them when they could little, very little afford it. They must have gone without for my sake that day, even that week. In the midst of their poverty, they spoke to me of the generosity of God in their lives through the Lord Jesus Christ. Like others in our diocesan family, I've had similar experiences amongst Christians in our linked diocese in Kenya. Again and again, I have seen amazing sacrificial giving by the poorest to build churches and resource evangelism and social action. Today, gently but very definitely, we launch our stewardship project, Generous God, Generous Disciples. The title is well chosen and challenges our ongoing response to the love of God to us in the Lord Jesus Christ, through our time, our talents, and yes, our money. As we launch today, let me highlight some key things about the project. Firstly, this is not a one-off. Rather, it is a challenge to permanent changes in gear in our giving. It provides great resources to teach and support the discipleship of all our church families in generous giving in proportion to their capacity to do so. It is not just for Advent, but for well beyond, as you will be told elsewhere in this service. The project resources are running through the whole of 2021, and we hope they will be a tool to equip parishes working with their mission and ministry advisors to respond to the challenge and opportunity of Christian stewardship. Secondly, we are not asking anybody to give what they have not got. I've said this many times before, but please receive it again. Why launch a Christian giving initiative during a time when we're all up against it and some in our midst are worst off after losing jobs or being laid off due to the pandemic? I know very well that some believe this is the wrong time to do so. I disagree for many reasons. But above all, for the third thing I want to say, and that is, whatever the circumstances, generosity always marks us out, should mark us out as Christian disciples. It's all there in our New Testament Advent reading from the first chapter of 1 Corinthians today. Let me pick out just two words from that reading to illustrate. The first word appears in verse 5. For in him, in Jesus, you have been enriched in every way. Enriched. If we are in Christ, we are enriched by our generous giving God. 
We are all rich in Christ. Whatever our material situation, we all have some capacity to give sacrificially and generously of our time, talents and money. Jesus' own words and actions in the Gospels are marked out by both generosity and reality. So often he produces abundance out of meagre possibility, feeding the 5,000 from a young boy's picnic, rescuing a family from a social disaster at a wedding reception with new and better wine. Yet he never pulls his punches on the personal challenge to would-be disciples about the sacrifices needed to advance the kingdom of God. We are enriched. Let's be generous. That brings me to the second and even more fundamental word. Grace. Grace and peace. This is verse 3 of 1 Corinthians. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. The grace of God is the bottom line for all in giving. As a young Christian, I was taught to understand grace by its letters, G R A C E, God's riches at Christ's expense, grace. In whatever way, you understand Jesus' death on the cross, theologically and practically, it is undoubtedly total sacrifice in love, a final generous giving of himself for all our sakes. Our amazing generous God went all the way, even to death on a cross out of love for us. That generous giving calls out a continually generous and loving response from those who would follow him as his disciples, us. If we know the total love of Jesus, then we know a generous God and we will want to be generous disciples. Today is Advent Sunday. This year's Advent journey will be like no other. A year ago, the words pandemic and lockdown were little known amongst us. All has changed. The challenges of life and mortality are now more stark for us all, physically, socially and economically. The pain and sacrifice for many has been acute. One of the themes of Advent is Christian hope. We who are Christ's disciples remind ourselves that God is going to complete the job he started in Bethlehem on that first Christmas and continued in Jesus' death and mighty resurrection. So what do you hope and pray for this Advent? Of course, we all hope and pray for an end to this brutal pandemic. We pray that the vaccines on the horizon will work. We hope and pray for an economic <coughs> upturn for the well-being of all. But don't we Christians also hope and pray that more people will come to know our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we're here. That's what we're for as disciples. And commit themselves as disciples along with us, especially at this hardest of times. To fulfil that hope, the Church of God must be well resourced. And that is the reason, despite all other demands, we are launching Generous God, Generous Disciples, now. Now is the time to be generous. We cannot wait 
if we truly wish to reverse the decline in resourcing the gospel in our churches across the diocesan family. Now is the time. And it's only a beginning. It's not a one-off. The future resourcing and sustaining of our mission in East London and Essex is becoming ever more challenging. As disciples in God's church, it is that demand we need to address generously, realistically, sacrificially and radically going forward. I honestly believed and have seen that God's work done in God's way will not lack God's abundant provision. Let's all play our heart and our part in making that a reality and gradually and definitely moving up the gears in our generous giving. Back to that prayer of Ignatius of Loyola to end. Lord Jesus, teach us to be generous, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost. Amen.